Hey everybody, and welcome to Let's Play Nancy Drew: Secret of the Old Clock. This is the twelfth game in the Nancy Drew series, but if I'm not mistaken, it's actually one of the first Nancy Drew novels. And we finally got the game based on it, so this is going to be exciting. It's also kind of exciting too, because this is the first Nancy Drew game I've recorded in quite a while. And by quite a while, I only mean like a month and a half. But that feels like quite a while, so I'm excited to jump back in. Let's get started. Um, I tried starting a game here, but uh, I'm going to start over, so let's go ahead and say yes. Welcome to my latest case. Senior the Detective. The year, 1930. The place, the road to Titusville, where we find Nancy Drew behind the wheel of her blue roadster, pondering this question. Why did Emily Crandall, a girl whom Nancy knows only through their mutual friend Helen Corning, ask Nancy to drive all the way out to the Lilac Inn to see her? Does it have something to do with the fact that Emily's mother died barely a month earlier, leaving Emily to run the restaurant with only her guardian to help her? And more important, why, when she called, did Emily sound so desperate? Dun dun dun. The teenager turns off the main road, blissfully unaware that Emily isn't all that waits her at the end of the driveway. No, Nancy Drew is about to get her first taste of the mystery, intrigue, and adventure that are to become her destiny. That's right, everybody. It is 1930, not the present day. And we are going to the Lilac Inn to see Emily. And I'm not going to continue talking in that voice. Okay, so Lilac Inn. This was established in 1908. Uh, there's apparently more over here. Can we... Well, I guess we can't go off the path. Okay, there's a bridge. And... Wow, okay. This goes on for a while. I have a feeling there's going to be stuff off the path that we'll eventually be able to see. Oh, there's someone else's house or something over here. Topham School Paranormal Powers? Training session in progress. Do not disturb. Do not disturb. Okay, I won't. Well, even though this is 1930, Nancy still has the same voice, which is pretty cool. Uh, there's also another path here, wasn't there? This one? Where does this go to? Whoa. Oh, a miniature golf course. Swell. Swell. Well, we'll check that out here at some point, but first I think we need to go to the Lilac Inn and visit this Emily character, so let's do that. I'm starting to sound like that announcer guy again. Wait a minute, can we see anything from here? I guess we can't really go around the side, but no. It'd be cool if you could do that, though. And, oh, there's a phone here. Well, I guess we can use that when we're ready to call people. Hey, someone's here. Hello. Well, hello. Hello. Oh, my bloomers, you're Nancy Drew. Oh, where have I heard this lady's voice before? I know she's played a character or two on in these in the Nancy Drew series. That's right. Are you Emily's guardian? You got it. I'm Jane Willoughby. I'm Emily's guardian, but only for the next three months until she turns 18. Then she's on her own. Hmm. Mmm. It smells like someone's been baking pies. Pies are the Lilac Inn specialty. We get orders from all over. Oh, that reminds me your father called. You're supposed to call him. You can use the coin phone on the porch. Emily didn't say anything about you coming until just this morning. Is it okay that I'm here? Don't get me wrong. She can invite anybody here she wants. It's just that she's gotten so darn forgetful lately. Uh-oh. Is she all right? Well, now that's hard to say. She misses her mom, that's for sure. So do I. Gloria and me, we were best friends, you know? The two of us ran this swell little dress shop over in Capital City. But then she got hitched and I didn't. And the next thing I know, she's writing me saying it would sure take a load off her mind if I could take care of her little girl should something ever happen to her. There's a lot of things that are swell in 1930. Emily's father... Died in the war. Cantigny, I think. Anyway, I couldn't say no. I mean, what are best friends for? I just wish I knew how to help Emily. Help her do what? She's been acting so... Look, go talk to her. She probably just needs to spend some time with a bear cat like you instead of some dumb Dora like me. Go on up. She's in her room. Just make like a Boy Scout and be prepared. I'm gonna make like a tree and go up there, though. Let's see what else is around here. 
can we look around? I want to make sure I get a load of what's going on here. Oh, hey, there's a room over here. So I guess this is like a bed and breakfast? Like. I like that. I like that. Get it? Heh, <laughs> heh. Okay. So is this like a... Deductive reasoning related thing? Or is this just something for fun? I don't know. I guess if we need to look it up, we can look it up. Hobo sign language becoming widespread. Okay, this is definitely going to be useful. I'm going to take a picture of this guy here. Because we're almost certainly going to need that. So, let's go ahead and zoom back out. We can't read those. Okay. Oh, hey, there's a little reading nook thing over there. There's a fireplace. And a puzzle! No idea what we would want to solve this puzzle for, but let's give it a shot. Ooh, I like this music. This is... This is swell music! See, I'm sounding all 1930s now. I wonder how this works. Like, Because like, in real life, I would imagine that if these things are not on sliders or something, that you'd be able to move them around. I mean, this feels strange to me. Okay, I think we need to do something like that. No, 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 I didn't mean to... I'm going to have to start over, aren't I? Yeah. Okay. I think what we need to do is we need to slide this over so we can get... I mean, you need to get this guy down. I think that's what needs to happen, so... Do, do, do. Oh, I can go move that up. Okay, so I can do that. That's that's helpful. Oh, okay, we got a little problem here. I'm assuming that we just need to clear a straight line. Like, there, we can just do it all in one fell swoop. We don't actually have to slowly move it across or anything. At least I think that's usually how these things work, but I could be wrong. Uh, I really want to get this out of there. Hmm. In order to do that, I have a feeling that I'm going to need to do something like that. There we go. Can I move this? No, I can't move that to the right. That'd be cool. There we go. All right, I got a cuckoo thing, and what this mirror is doing in here. I got a mirror. We haven't even met Emily yet, and we solved a puzzle. Awesome. All right. Okay, I'm gonna have to remember the interface. Whoa, this is new. We got money here. Okay, there we go. That's right, because now we've got a separate item thing that comes up. What is this? Ooh, we've got a map. We've got a map, guys. Look at this. All right, I'm liking this. This is this is fun. Got this nice jazzy music. We got a map. Ooh, Bard Bounce, a game based upon a Midsummer Night's Dream, a play by Wm Shakespeare. William Shakespeare. Do Shakespeare proud by using the arrows to move each man to the woman with whom he belongs. Remember, love is never easy. Whenever you move someone, he will keep going until he hits an obstacle, another character, or the end of the road. So plan ahead, five cents per game. All right, well, we've got money. All right, so we need to match the colors here. All right, so this guy, this is going to be kind of tricky. I'm assuming these slide. Yeah, these slide. Okay. I'm probably going to end up just randomly doing stuff. I don't think there's like a limit to how many moves I can make, right? Oh, this piece of music sounds familiar to me, but I don't know what from. I'm wondering just how many of these things can be solved just by staggering things over and over again. I feel like there's nothing stopping us from doing that. Um, this one is easy. I can just slide this in there like that. Okay, once it's in, okay, I can go back out, but I'm not sure I want to. 
Um, let's see here. Blue needs to go there. And if I were to go up here, I can slide to the right. Or something like that. So that would be nice if I could, but the green one is currently there. So I'm going to move green over there, which means blue can go here. Okay. That is most excellent. Um... Okay, I think I see how I'm going to solve this. I need to put green and red down here, which means basically this. Just go around like that and then slide both to the left. There we go. Ooh, we got a trumpety fanfare. Keen. Wait, that's all we got? Keen? Is that like a clue? Did I write something in the journal about it? Oh, she wrote about the horse thing. We're giving him the answers without realizing it. I'll have to remember that the next time I take an oral quiz. Okay, I don't think that's going to be important, because that's probably in reference to school. Alright, so the journal gives us tips for driving around. I don't think that we've ever done that in a Nancy Drew game up to this point chronologically just because we've mostly clicked on a map and just instantly gone places. So this must be the first Nancy Drew game where that's actually a possibility. I know later games do it, like Trail the Twister and whatnot. Alright, I don't know what the point of the Shakespeare thing is, so... Maybe we'll have to come back to that later on, or maybe Keen is a password to something... Don't know, but... Let's see, let's talk to Miss Emily. I guess we can't go back there, so... Go upstairs? Can we look at any of the pictures? I guess not. There's several rooms here. Can we go in any other rooms, or is it just Emily's room? Is this Emily's room? It is Emily's room. Hey, Emily. Nancy, hi. Welcome to the Lilac Inn. Oh, and before I forget, thank you for that nice note you sent me when Mom died. It meant a lot to me. Well, you're certainly not alone in that regard, Emily. Well, I lost my mom, too, years ago. I kind of know how you feel. You and I may not be best friends or anything, but you're still one of the nicest people I know. Aww. Well, thank you. That's why I'm hoping you'll do me a favor. A big favor. You and your dad? My dad? Helen says he's a lawyer. Mm-hmm. Shh. Whoa. That's a close-up. What's wrong? I thought I heard something. Your father has a safe, right? This is 1930. Lots of people have safes. See this jewelry? I'd like you to take it home with you and put it in your father's safe. Ooh. It's beautiful. It was my mother's. The few times I saw her wear it, she looked just like a movie star. I was hiding it here in my room, but all things considered, I'd feel a lot better if you would just take it home and have your father lock it up in his safe. What about your guardian? Can't she take care of it? Yeah. Oh, I don't want her to know I'm doing this, so don't tell her, all right? See, strange things have been going on around here. That's all I can say. I know it sounds loony, and Jane probably told you that I've been acting loony, but please do this for me. Whoa. What was that? Ah! Emily, come downstairs, quick! The kitchen's on fire! Oh. Come on, we better get out of here. Okay. So there was a fire? I don't think that's a game over. This is horrible, just horrible. The fire chief says the stove was completely destroyed and there's smoke damage everywhere. The inn will have to shut down for months, maybe even for good. Oh no. Does he know what caused the explosion? It looked to him like one of the burners on the stove had been left on. The flame either went out or was never lit, but anyway, something made a spark and boom. boom. He said insurance companies are very reluctant to pay out when things look hinky. And that's when times are good. Yeah, I've certainly had experience with that, working for a law firm. Where did Emily go? She was right here. Emily was the last person to use the stove. Like I said, she's been real forgetful lately. I think she's pretty upset. 
but it's not her fault. What with her mom passing away barely a month ago, and me showing up, this total stranger who doesn't know the first thing about kids or running a restaurant, and her trying to do everything all by herself. It's just too much, that's all. Who wouldn't go a little off their nut? Are you saying she did it? I better get that. The line to the regular phone got burned up in the fire. So now the only phone we got is the coin phone on the porch. Excuse me. Oh no! Uh oh. Emily? Man, we're getting a lot of cutscenes in this game. My mother's jewelry! It's gone! Dun dun dun! We were all downstairs. I knew something like this was going to happen. I just knew it. You mean, this sort of thing has happened before? Yes. I mean, no. I mean, I'd rather not say. But I will say this. I did not leave the stove on. That fire was not my fault. Oh, what am I going to do? Without that jewelry, I don't have a prayer of paying for a new stove. And without a stove, I'll have to sell the inn. And if I lose the inn... I wish Mom were still here. Aww. I wish Josiah Crowley had left us the money like he always said he was going to. That's what I wish. Who's Josiah Crowley? Yeah. He was this old man that lived next door. He died last year. He spent most of his time here at the inn, and he led my mom and me to believe that he'd left a lot of money for us in his will. He gave us a clock, and afterwards, he'd always point to it and get this little twinkle in his eye and say, time will tell. But when they finally found his will, he didn't leave us a penny. Hmm. I smell something suspicious here. Was there a problem finding his will? It didn't turn up for months. Then finally someone found it in a drawer in Josiah's house. Yeah, Josiah really suspicious. Kind of screwball. <laughs> One time he showed up at my birthday party dressed as my great aunt Harriet. I didn't know it was really him until two days later. Anyway, he had all these weird hobbies, and he always thought it would be really keen to read minds. Josiah invited Richard Topham to move in so Topham could help him develop his paranormal powers right there in his house. Oh. Josiah was a sweet old man, and I do miss him. And he was free to give his money to whomever he wanted. But to get our hopes up like that, and then leave us nothing, it just wasn't like him. Yeah, I'm smelling some foul play here. Where is Richard Topham now? He still lives in Josiah's house, which is right down the path out back. Okay. His house and the inn were built at the same time by two brothers during the Civil War. Okay, so that's the house we saw. Was your mother's jewelry insured? Gosh, I forgot about that. I don't know. Jim Archer. I bet he'd know. He's our banker. I guess I should go talk to him. Not one of your favorite people, huh? Oh, no. Mr. Archer's very nice. I mean, for a stuffy old banker. I'm just so bad at business things. And Jane, my guardian, she tries hard, but she's no good at it either. Maybe you could go talk to him. Please? It would be such a big help. Sure. He runs the Main Street Bank. You can't miss it. I'll call him and tell him you're coming. Okay. How many people knew you kept your mother's jewelry in here? No one. Well, Jane, my guardian, she knew, but I didn't tell anyone else. Then Jane is suspect number one. Is the clock in the parlor the one Josiah gave you? Yes. I don't know why he gave it to us. It's never worked, and nobody can open it to find out why. Well, we opened it a little while ago. I'll be back in a little bit. Don't forget to call your father. At least I'm assuming that that was the same clock. So we can look in he Oh, I guess we can't look in there. Maybe we can look in there when she's gone. Alright, we can play the record here. That's nice. Oh, I guess we have to stop playing when we walk away. We got shoes, we got this. The Rubiot of Omar Khayyam. Gloria, read this, and pretty soon this fellow will be your favorite poet, too. Your pal, Josiah. Okay, so we got poems. With a very difficult-to-read font. Alright, that's cool. Anything under the pillow? It seems to be a good place to hide a journal or something. Ooh, we got Is a this sewing. Your sewing machine. Actually, that belonged to my mom. She and Jane used to be dressmakers. Oh. Mom was going to teach me how to use it, but she... She never got the chance. Alright. Something tells me we're going to use that at some point. 
Um, uh, nothing there. Ooh, an umbrella. Oh, and here's a little makeup area dresser thing. Alright, so I think we've seen everything there is to see, so let's go ahead and leave. Can we look at these rooms? I'm doubting we can look at these rooms. We can only go down to the end. Alright. Can we talk to Jane? We definitely cannot go in the kitchen. So? Is Emily alright? Someone stole her mother's jewelry. What? Did you happen to see anyone go upstairs during all the commotion that the fire caused? No. You mean someone stole it while everybody was rushing around trying to put out the fire? Hypers! If you can't trust a fireman, who can you trust? I don't know, but I'm willing to bet that there's probably more than just the firemen and us here in the building. Are you sure no one besides you and Emily was in the kitchen this morning? Positive. Well, I suppose someone could have snuck in the back door. Are you saying someone caused that fire on purpose? To distract us? Well, Emily did uh, seem to he like hear something. I, I forget exactly what, but remember before the fire happened, she was like, Shh, I thought I heard something, or something like that. So someone could have snuck in, right? It's possible, don't you think? But I'm the only one who knew she had that jewelry. Well, it's not quite true. Oh? When Gloria was alive, she could have told people about it, or people may have seen her wearing it. And when she died, they knew the jewelry had to be around here somewhere, right? Does anyone in particular come to mind? Sorry. It's been hard enough getting to know Emily, let alone anyone else in this backwater burg. Well, guess I better go call the sheriff. Is that your car I saw when I drove up the driveway? My old rust bucket's parked out back where nobody will see it. Be nice to buy something decent, but last time I checked, my last name was Willoughby, not Rockefeller. Yeah. Where did that barred bounce game that's in the parlor come from? Do you know? Emily says Josiah Crowley brought it in one day and just left it. Said it was so guests, as in him, would have something to do while they waited for a table. Does the miniature golf course that's out back belong to the inn? No, that was Josiah Crowley's. Way I hear, he built it himself. Well, that's cool. Have you tried it out? Me? Please, I got better things to do with my time. <laughs> well, I do too, but I'm gonna get some time in for some golf. Well, I'll talk to you later. You betcha. And I think we're gonna do that in the next video. So, until then, guys, thanks so much for watching. Next time, we're gonna go out here and start exploring. We got some places to drive around town and check out. And I wanna see this miniature golf thing. Also, whoa, hey, grab that. Looks like someone recently had a key appraised. Oh, a key, huh? Interesting. I want to see this uh, house here. It looks like we can go in, so I'm going to visit that dude, and then I'm going to check out the mini, the mini golf thing. So until then, guys, thanks so much for watching, and I will catch you on the flip side. Man, it feels good to say that again. <laughs>